Hello everyone. This is a video. I've made a similar video to this in in the past before, but now we're we're really gonna. I'm really gonna drive the point home here. What do I mean by this? I'm I'm gonna cover the whole shebang. And to the best of my abilities, maybe uh, maybe not the best of my abilities. I'm kind of lazy, uh, and I want to get out of that habit. Regardless, we're gonna be talking about this sensitive topic that I know a lot of people, especially Reddit, is gonna be a little pissy about, but it makes me, it makes me fucking mad, um, and it's something I feel like we need to talk about, and not that I've come up with some evolutionary take or anything, but, uh, it's more along the lines of, how would I say, um, a more logic-centric standpoint, because I, I see that that seems to be missing more often than not, and I think I've had a fucking eureka moment here, I've gotta be real with you, uh, somehow, some way. I've had a eureka moment in regards to this, and yeah, I'm just gonna dive into it head first, and hopefully I don't shatter my vertebrae on the, you know, concrete surface that is the Destiny community having an opinion. Anyway, digressing. We have this common battleground, which is PvE versus PvP in the Destiny community, in Destiny social media. And when I say social media, I'm referring to things like Reddit, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Discord, all these places where you'd be engaging with other members of the Destiny community. And we have solid arguments for both sides, pun intended. However, I've come to this kind of, this arcane understanding of both sides, and they both make sense, right? There's arguments that are perfectly fine for both. Just to list them off the top of my head, common ones you see for PVR like Destiny's a PvE game with a PvP side mode, we're paying for PvE content, um, you know, PvE should have more difficulty and more resources allocated to it than PvP, and the arguments for PvP often follow a trend of, like, what's the purpose of acquiring these cool weapons and these god rolls and all this cool stuff with loadouts and in-maxing builds, if not to just play PvP with? Trials and survival exist, which is whatever and that there's often lack, uh, lackluster resource allocation in PvP, which tends to be a problem for PvP. We see that, you know, a lack of creation of modes and maps and just a, a curated PvP experience has often, ha has often plagued Destiny 2 as a whole. And this, is, this has definitely led to a lot of stagnation, and I feel like this has contributed negatively towards the performance of the game. And there's also been quite a bit of a stagnation in PvE as well. I feel like difficulty curve should definitely have been cranked up probably 20-fold over the past four years in Destiny 2 PvE. But that's a different topic, and I'll get into that maybe maybe later in this video, if not a different video altogether. So, my point being, why does this argument exist? I kind of sat in my room and stared at the ceiling. The stared at the stars in the sky. Well, it's a popcorn ceiling. I, I don't have a popcorn ceiling, never mind. Anyway... I was like sitting here thinking to myself, why does this argument exist? Like, sure, you can make the argument, well, besides, it's, the live it's a live service game, right? What does that mean? It means that we get regular updates in an ever-developing game with an ever-developing world, fantasy, or whatever you may want, right? Cool. And we pay for expansions like Beyond Light, Forsaken, Shadowkeep. Jeez, I can't believe I spent money on that. Anyway, we have the seasonal content, which we pay, I, think, I don't know, most people pay $15 a month for it every season, or not a month, sorry. That's something else. Fifteen dollars every three months for the seasonal content, or you buy the season pass, which gives you all of the seasons for free. Once you buy the season pass, or quote unquote free, like you upfront pay, whatever. And that's cool and all. And you can make the argument, well, PvP is the free, fun experience, right? Well, okay, let's break that down. What do you really get when you play free to play in this game? A severe disadvantage, especially in the you know post stasis crucible. What? That's like whatever. Um, that's that's a. That's a cup of tea. But even when we take this argument into account, and I think that all of you absolutely furious PvE people right now can agree with me 100%, this seasonal content tends to be pretty lackluster. We very rarely get more than, like, three new guns. Now, that's not to go... Like, that's going without saying things like, the content's not bad, it's just boring. It's tiresome and dull, and it's monotonous. Uh, that was like four synonyms of boring, and I apologize for that. 
but my point remains that the content it it is so wishy-washy that it, it feels like i'm doing the same thing over and over and over on repeat with little to no variation now i'm gonna pause myself here and i'm gonna say hey i actually kind of enjoyed the battlegrounds i thought they were a really cool concept and i hope that we get more e like ever dynamic ever evolving kind of storylines like this because i think that the in-game storytelling storytelling for the season of the chosen was excellent and i'm not even a lore guy i think that the lore of destiny has been pretty bad and i don't mean that in like a in like a it's low quality i mean that is i just don't care about it right uh, i play pvp i don't really care about the story uh and i'm getting off topic so the argument goes back to why does pve versus pvp exist especially when i'm sure there i would argue probably 85 percent plus of regular pvp people would be more than happy to pay uh like a seasonal pass for a seasonal pvp pass or something like that i almost guarantee it or just include pvp into maybe not pvp but like a curated pvp and i'm gonna cover this later on in the video don't worry about that this, this is a, i'm gonna hit this nail into the hammer 30 times with a piece of wood anyway i'm sure many of us would pay that season pass twice over for a really nice pvp experience whether that be like locking something like trials behind that experience or whatever right and it's a live service game there's no real reason why we shouldn't be able to like we can expect both facets of the game to be good it doesn't have to be oh one's good and one's bad we can have good pve and good pvp and that's my big argument here is why is why does this pve versus pvp oh pvp is free to play why does that argument exist that, that's such a stupid false point that's like so one-sided it's it's kind of i think it falls under this like fallacy of you always got to look out for number one you know i'm always looking out for what's in my best interest and it's like pve is in my interest too but do we really need to have one be better than than the other like or worse than the other by a significant margin like of course there's going to be periods where like oh this season's pv content's pretty stale but the pvp season's sick and like you know vice versa but i think i'm rambling so i'm going to move on to the next point i'm sure by this point you've probably gathered what i'm getting at here and if not honestly you might as well just close the video because you're not interested all right cool so we're going to be bouncing back to this whole curated, and I'm using that word very, very loosely, because curated sounds nice. It sounds like, I've curated this experience for you, bruv. Or like, you know, something cool like that. Anyway, when I say curated, I'm mostly speaking that it's tailored within the season, I think is what I should elaborate from henceforth. So when I say the seasonal PvP experience that like me and I know many other people would be willing to pay a little extra premium for... And again, we could do a test run of that for maybe a year or, you know, a season. I don't know. Like, what, what are we going to do? Oh, no. Darn. We only sold the normal amount instead of double. So I made a Crucible Campaigns video, and you should check that out. And I'll throw a link in the, in the description, and I'll probably, like, be playing a clip of it right here. I might even do, like, a vocal jump cut here to what I said. But pretty much it was suggesting... Things that could tie in storylines to PvP play. Now, that sounds a little convoluted, but again, you you would have to watch the video. I'm not going to go too in-depth about it, but it would include like a, a seasonal playlist. So imagine like we how we have Battlegrounds now, but we get one like in season of season of the Crucible, for example. Or like something like that you know we call it a season of redacted and it doesn't have to be about a pvp season right it could just be another season and th it's it's thematic and that was the whole like case in point of the video was hey we should have thematic playlists because it gives us something new to do and it ties it in now imagine the um that thing where we had to rebuild the 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 lighthouse i, I don't even frack the line something like that I don't actually remember what that event was called because I didn't play it because I didn't want Trials to come back, so I didn't invest any of it. But, um... Imagine we had something like that, but there was a PvP side to it and a PvE side. So imagine we have our Battlegrounds playlist, our standard, like, Sundial, Battlegrounds, you know, Black Armory Forges, whatever that may be that season. And we also have a PvP variant of that, which is, you know, the new playlist. And it could be, like, a whole new game mode, right? Like, it could be, like, 6v6, uh, like, Breakthrough... But Breakthrough doesn't doesn't not do good, you know? Like, it's a good version of Breakthrough. 
and it's on new maps and maybe these maps are limited time you know this kind of thing and it's worth hitting the point home that this doesn't have to take away from pve resources the big argument is like, oh, why should we take away from PvE resources, sides? It's like, does this have to take away from PvE resources? No. I think as a consumer, it's not pretty unrealistic for me to want something better of the game that I play, and that I probably have more hours than anyone else in. I don't mean that really. I, Drew has a lot more hours than me. I didn't say that. We're gonna take that. I, I, I'm cutting that part out. Moving on from that. We hear this argument of, oh, survival, oh, ranked, oh, competitive, oh, trials. And we want these curated experiences where it's like this end game PvP or this like next level, uh, I guess, next generational ranked mode or something of that sort, right? And a lot of people are going to be like, again, both PvE and PvP people are going to be like, okay, well, we can't have this. Ranked and doesn't belong in destiny 2 or competitive doesn't belong in destiny 2 and we're not suggesting that it does we're just saying hey we would like the option to maybe push it to the limit right and my approach has always been at least since i want to say like early year three was structuring a ranked mode similarly to or just even pvp to world of warcraft's arena and how their honor and, and valor system work and glory system and i'll link a, a twitter post here you can ignore some of the parts. In, a, in some of these videos, I kind of mentioned, hey, we should just take Trials out because it's a garbage mode. And what I've come to learn over the years is that Trials players are oftentimes mindless drones that are incapable of having more than one complex thought at a time. And so uh, I tend to just cast them out of any thinking. But unfortunately, I kind of can't because they make up a lot more viewership than I have and a lot more like vocalization than I have. And so instead of uh, belittling and casting out the Trials idiots, I have to include them and say, with or without Trials, we could still have this arena-style mode that has its own rewards. We don't have to. We can have one or the other. But I really feel like Trials is a very closed-circuit, dead-end type B, where it's like, once you have all the rewards, you're going to start running into nothing but these quote-unquote... And again, I'm, I don't have these mentalities. I, I'm just going to go ahead and reciprocate what I see from the Trials kids on Twitter and Twitch and all that. Oh, well... All I run into is stacked teams. Man, the cheaters were really bad this weekend. Darn, I wish I could go flawless, but it's all a bunch of sweats. Again, these are quotes. These aren't my thoughts. So, you know, that's kind of why I say Trials is a dead-end playlist. If that didn't make any sense, I'm sorry. And again, I'm going to hit the point home. Hey, this could all be included with your standard PvE content and just... I don't know, make it part of the season pass or charge double, I don't know, charge a PvP season pass. I promise I would pay for that and I know literally most of my viewers and I know most of the people I know, my friends and followers and all these people would pay for it because it means it's just another paywall to stop cheating, to, you know, throw money at the developer and say, hey, we like this, here's our dollar saying we like this, right? I mean, as a consumer, you, you speak with your money, you speak with your wallet. And as we see, people aren't very happy with Trials recently. People aren't very happy with PvP recently. So you see that these player counts are going down, and this, it's getting worse, and voices are getting louder and louder and louder about problems that have been prevalent since year one. But that's besides the point. The blind people are starting to kind of... They're kind of being forced to see the blinding light that is the glaring issues in Destiny PvP. Now, there are some people who uh, use Stompies that maybe hit their head on the ceiling a little too hard and don't understand what the problems are and that's a them problem and again i'm doing this thing where i'm rambling again and i'm gonna cut the video or the audio take here but hopefully i've made a point okay so now the next logical statement is uh, without i guess kind of throwing all the points that i've just said in like in your face just discarding them would be sure you said a lot here and it sounds solid but what are your ideas how can we even know that this is a feasible plan long term or even short term? And so I've come up with a, it's not more of a proposal, but it's along the lines of a example. So we'll call it season of adjudication. Essentially, it's season of factions. So I referenced this in my Crucible campaigns video where I talked about how uh, lore wise it could tie in and be like, oh, the factions are rallying strength and they're rallying favor. They're trying to get stronger 
gain more favor and control over the city, or I don't know, whatever the hell the, the factions do in Destiny War, I, I don't care. It, it was just a, more of a vehicle of war, right? Which is essentially how I view Destiny War. So, the factions are all putting interest in, and they want something to do with PvP, they're trying to get the best Crucible people, and... You know, there's a lot of tie-ins to this, and they're rallying people in PvE, and maybe there's even skirmish, like there's, you know, faction versus faction skirmishes going on out there. Who knows, right? All of this caused by stasis. They want, they want a part of stasis, and like, you see what I'm getting at here. And so you could easily tie this in with some, like, weird seasonal mode where, I don't know, you gotta fight stuff. You, you gotta fight stuff, and the better you fight stuff, and the faster you fight stuff, and the more you fight stuff. You know, it progresses the faction storyline, and then you could have some, like, Season of the Chosen, Battleground, ev like, evolving storyline type beat going on, and that would be cool. Uh, and again, this is just, like, a rough example. I, I ad-libbed all of this. Hopefully, this kind of gives you a frame of an idea of how we could really function this to be in. I, I, I don't know. Hopefully... Hopefully this sounds like a convincing idea so that I can have some people go and mindlessly drone for me and my ideas. Because, I I mean, while I have some of that, I don't have a lot of it going for me. And that's a joke. Please don't mindlessly drone. Be capable of critical thought or I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. I didn't do a very good job on that example, so I'm gonna give one that's maybe a little bit easier to relate to. And it's gonna be within the context of Season of the Chosen. This is the season that is currently live or about a month away from the next season at this time of recording. So imagine that we have what we have now with the battlegrounds and the evolving uh, situation with the Cabal War at the helm, but we also have this nice shiny seasonally themed battleground playlist that has limited time mode and maybe one to three new maps. And these modes and maps could be released to the standard free to play, quick play, or whatever else experience if it's, you know, doable. For the rest of the year or however long after the season or in the middle of the season after the seasonal content has quote unquote hit its climax or like the storyline has hit its climax now imagine we have this cool stuff but in this uh seasonal mode that you would i don't know pay like i don't know 10 to 15 usd just a uh, random figures like i said for the pvp seasonal pass but you can earn hammer charges in cabal gold and Umbral Ingrams and stuff like that in that playlist. So it serves as a very replayable alternative for PvP focused players. On top of that, it also offers a little bit of maybe entry room, maybe an entry point for more casual PvE players to go and try something new in PvP. Uh, because it's a playlist that it's a whole new experience for everyone. So people aren't going to have it quite figured out early on. It's going to take a little bit, right? Sure, people are going to be naturally like better at PvP in general, but it's going to be a little bit more newcomer friendly. And I figured, after sitting down and talking with some people about the subject of this video, I brought up that Season of the Chosen example, and I was like, that's pretty good, I should include that, because the one that I gave was a horrible example. And which is funny to me, actually, because I was talking about the, like, an exclusive, season-exclusive mode or whatever, and I find it kind of cool that the battlegrounds are kind of like this open space, like almost strike-esque. So I, and I remember like them mentioning they would love to explore more like bigger party action. If you remember when there were the 12 player raid or like the 12 player instance bug was going on, how you could like join it on your friends. I wonder how that would play out if like it was like an 8v8. 8v8 kind of battleground with objectives and stuff like that. Kind of like a pseudo gambit even. Maybe without the enemies. But whatever. In like a battleground space. I wonder how that would play out, you know? Almost kind of like Halo 5's Warzone. Which... Not, 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 not Call of Duty Warzone. If you don't know what Halo 5's Warzone is... It was kind of like... <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like Battlefield matches Halo, kind of, with, like, spawnables, and you earn these requisition points that you could spawn with, like, a sniper rifle or a tank or something like that. It was a very cool mode. Anyway, you could do the Google search. And this is just, like, an example I wanted to throw out there and... Yeah, I think that it definitely kind of brings my statement a little bit more to a, a rounding close. 
Anyway, one final elaboration that this is all under the general assumption that like this new PvP focused stuff would give us new maps, new game modes, all that kind of stuff. Maybe bring old game modes back like Rift. Give us maybe a more curated competitive experience. And I'm not saying that the game has to be competitive and you can have your own mentality on that. I have my own mentality on that. As I said multiple times before, I think that like a survival playlist or like a trials or anything like that should definitely be structured a little bit more like WoW's Arena. At least rank wise, the gameplay would probably, I would suggest it to be more like Battlegrounds, like, you know, your standard 3v3, 4v4, whatever, with an objective or like just a, you know, general gameplay standpoint. Uh, I'm getting off track here, man. I've made 500 videos about this. I'm not going to make another one. I'll just link the Twitter post and you can read through that. Yeah, general assumption that, you know, we're paying for this, so that means that maybe we get a little bit more love towards the PvP, and that's the ultimate goal here, right? Uh, whether or not this happens is heavily, heavily, heavily weighted towards the never happening because sides is sides and his ideas are bad, but I don't care about that because I have a message and I'm going to push that message. And um, just to wrap this video up, I'm going to elaborate, or not elaborate, but like kind of TLDW or summarize because I've been rambling for 21 minutes and 10 seconds at this point so look forward to that so rapid fire summary here PvE versus PvP is a dumb argument founded on a principle that one aspect of the game has to be significantly worse than the other curated PvP content potentially locked behind a fairly priced and or inclusive or separate PvP season pass provides many opportunities that would otherwise be hindered by resource allocation this curated PvP content could potentially provide an opportunity to introduce otherwise uninterested players into PvP under a casual and unique guise. PvP tied into seasonal lore closely or loosely introduces replay value and immersion, I guess. PvP gains replay value due to these constructs easily, and competitive PvP rank structures similarly to WoW's arena are rated battlegrounds with exclusivity. See tweet. Again, an outlet form of anti-cheat. Cool, awesome, fun. Thanks for watching.